Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over transposition of the great arteries. And this video is part of an NCLEX review series over pediatric nursing. And as always, after you watch this YouTube video, you can access the free quiz that will test you on this condition. So let's get started. What is this condition, which it's sometimes referred to as transposition of the great vessels or it may be called TGA or TGV? Well, this is a congenital heart defect where the aorta and the pulmonary artery are switched. Hence, they're transposed, which is where the name comes. They have swapped positions in the heart. Now, a lot of times people get confused whenever they're studying these heart defects is what structures in this condition are switched. Well, let the name of the congenital heart defect help you, which is what I've been saying in all these videos we've been doing. We're talking about the great arteries and what are really the two great arteries in the heart that helps with blood flow. Number one, the aorta. In a normal heart without TGA, the aorta will take oxygenated blood that has came from the lungs and shoot it through the body. It normally will arise from this left ventricle. In this condition, it doesn't. It actually comes off of the right ventricle. The other artery is the pulmonary artery. That's an easy one because it has the name artery with it. And normally what that artery will do is it actually carries unoxygenated blood that has came, came in from the right side of the heart. So it's normally gonna come off of the right ventricle and shoot blood through the lungs, which the lungs will oxygenate it and then it'll come back into the left side of the heart. But here in this condition, those two Structures have switched positions. Now let's talk about some quick facts about this condition and the pathophysiology. Okay, according to cdc.gov, one in every 3,330 babies born in the United States will have this condition. Now as we we're talking about the aorta and the pulmonary artery are switched. So what is this going to do? It's going to cause some major problems. This is a critical congenital heart defect. Babies will not survive if they don't have some type of medical intervention to help correct this. So what's happening is that we have each side of the heart, we have the right side and the left side. The right side really deals with our pulmonary circulation because it's gonna take blood that's unoxygenated and push it to the lungs so it can become oxygenated. But then it's gonna flow back once it's oxygenated to the left side. So the left side controls our systemic circulation in a normal healthy heart. But in a heart that has this condition, it's really not gonna have any communication. So they each have their own circulation without communication. So the right side is just gonna do what it does and the left side is gonna do what it does and they're not gonna to work together. Now to truly understand here in a moment, we're gonna go over the blood flow in TGA, but let's talk about the blood flow in a normal heart. Here's an illustration of a heart that does not have TGA. And notice we have the pulmonary artery, it's shown in blue, it's coming off the right ventricle, and then we have the aorta, and it's coming off the left ventricle. That's how it should be. So everything starts in the right side. Blood is gonna drain in from the superior and inferior vena cava, and it's gonna go down to the right atrium. And here our blood is exhausted, it's unoxygenated, and it needs to get to the lungs. Then it's gonna travel down to the tricuspid valve, which is gonna open and allow it to fill inside the right ventricle. The right ventricle then is going to squeeze that blood up through the pulmonic valve. You can't see it here, but it's within that pulmonary artery. It's gonna flow up through the pulmonic valve, then through the pulmonary artery and into the lungs. It's gonna get oxygenated in the lungs, the blood, and then it's gonna flow back through the pulmonary vein. Once it goes through the pulmonary vein, it's gonna enter into the left atrium, then down through the bicuspid, also called the mitral valve. It's gonna fill inside that left ventricle, which is very strong. Left ventricle is going to squeeze it up through the aortic valve. Again, you cannot see it in this picture, but it lies within the aorta. Then that blood is going to go through the aorta and be shot throughout the body. And it's gonna be nice and oxygenated and it's gonna feed our tissues and our organs. 
However, this process is changed in a heart with TGA because we have our aorta and our pulmonary artery in the wrong location. So blood is going to enter in that right side just like how it would in that healthy heart without TGA. It's going to be drained in through the superior and inferior vena cava. It's going to go down into the right atrium. Now what is specific about this blood? It's exhausted. It needs some oxygen. So that's where it's hoping to go. But in a heart with TGA, that's not going to happen. So that blood will go from the right atrium down through the tricuspid valve, which will open up and fill in the right ventricle. Then the right ventricle is going to squeeze that blood up through the pulmonic valve, but it's going to go up through the aorta. And the aorta is going to shoot it up through the body to the organs and the tissues. Now, what does the organs and tissues think of this blood? doesn't like it. It's not good blood because it doesn't have oxygen. In order for those structures to work, they have to have oxygen. So the right side, as you're seeing, is doing our systemic circulation, which it shouldn't be. It should be doing pulmonary circulation. Okay, so it's doing its own thing. Now over here on the left, what it's doing is it's doing pulmonary circulation, which the left side should normally be doing systemic circulation. So the pulmonary artery is over here and it's pumping blood to the lungs. It's going back through the pulmonary vein, through the left atrium, the bicuspid slash mitral valve is opening, going down into the left ventricle, which is squeezing that nice, fresh, oxygenated blood up through the aortic valve and then back through the pulmonary artery to the lungs and it just keeps going and going. And that nice oxygenated blood never enters into systemic circulation and we need oxygen to survive. Now, how does a baby, whenever they're still in the womb, actually survive in utero with this heart condition, but once they're born, they start having signs and symptoms? Well, it all has to deal with the changes that take place in the heart after birth. It's really interesting what goes on once that baby starts breathing on its own and what structures in the heart will actually close and seal off. So let's quickly talk about those. So in the womb, the baby's blood is being supplied with oxygen through the placenta. But when it's, once it's born and starts breathing on its own, there's no more placenta, the lungs will start providing that oxygen. However, the heart has been created to allow itself to shift blood away from the lungs that aren't working. And it does this through bypasses. One bypass that's in a baby's heart who's in utero is called the foramen ovale. And this is a natural hole that is within the atrial septum. And it allows blood that's coming into the right side to be shunted or bypassed over to the left side. Because remember, in a normal healthy heart, the goal of the right side is to get it to the lungs. Well, lungs aren't working. So the blood will go through that foramen ovale into the left side and be pumped through systemic circulation. Another structure that will help is called the ductus arteriosus. And this is a little vessel that connects the aorta and the pulmonary artery. So it will allow blood to bypass that right side of the heart, go to the left side. And I want you to remember those two structures because after a baby is born, starts breathing on its own, there's pressure changes in the heart that will cause those, especially the frame and ovale to seal off and the ductus arteriosus will in a sense shrivel up and be sealed off as well. But in a child who has TGA, we actually want those structures to stay open until surgery can be performed on this child. Because these structures will actually allow mixing of blood. So once the baby's born, if those structures can stay open, which we're gonna talk about that in the nursing interventions and medical treatment, a medication can be given to keep this ductus arteriosus open, or a procedure can be done to actually enlarge the frame in O Valley, and it will allow um, arterial and venous blood to mix so the baby is getting some type of oxygenated blood before they have surgery where they can actually switch these vessels back. Now babies who do have transposition of the gray arteries, they usually do have some type of other congenital heart defect 
present in the heart as well, which actually can be beneficial for that baby until surgery is performed to switch the aorta and the pulmonary arteries position. So let me go over those three other defects they may have. One type is called a VSD, a ventricular septal defect. And what this is, is it's a hole in the ventricular septum. So right here you have a nice hole. Now, when you're looking at that, you should be thinking, hey, that is actually beneficial for that baby. It will allow a little bit of mixing of blood so that nice, fresh, oxygenated blood can flow over here, a little bit of it to the right ventricle, and then be shot up through the aorta to the body. Now, some other defects that may be present, which can be really beneficial, the other type is an ASD, which is an atrial septal defect, and it's a hole in between the two atrium. And what it does, just like the VSD, it will allow blood to mix. And sometimes they can do a procedure to actually enlarge that ASD until surgery can be performed. And another type of defect most commonly in this condition is a PDA, which is a patent ductus arteriosus. And that's where that natural structure that should normally close and seal off doesn't seal off and it stays open. And like I said before, we can give them medicine, prostaglandin E, to actually keep that vessel open so we can have that blood flowing from that pulmonary artery into the aorta so we have that fresh oxygenated blood and it can go to the body. Now let's talk about signs and symptoms along with nursing interventions and treatments for this condition. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the main concepts you need to know for your exams and we're gonna mesh it into one mnemonic. Because when you are studying for your pediatric exams, these congenital heart defects, you need to take away the main concepts about those defects, like tetralogy of flow. You wanna know about TET spells, that knee to chest position squatting, because that's probably gonna be on the exam about that condition. And for this condition, you wanna take away that telltale sign and symptom that that baby may be presenting with after birth, that they probably have this condition, along with interventions like that infusion to keep the ductus arteriosus open and the procedures to help correct this condition. So to help us remember all that information, let's remember the word swap because that is what's going on. Our aorta and our pulmonary artery have swapped positions and it's causing us a lot of problems. So the first part of our mnemonic is S and it's gonna deal with signs and symptoms and it's for severe cyanosis. That is that telltale sign that whenever the baby is born that they may have transposition of the gray arteries because it's cyanosis that's not going to resolve and some babies can be severely blue and it can actually get worse. And what will happen is that you can have various degrees of cyanosis depending on if that baby has other heart defects present. Because remember, we talked about they can have a VSC, an ASC, or a PDA. And if those are present in the heart, they are allowing some blood flow to mix and shoot that oxygenated blood through the body. So they could be a little less cyanotic than maybe a child who does not have any other defect. So keep that in mind. It can vary. And it will actually, that cyanosis, if they're not aware that this child has TGA, a lot of times they know through the fetal ultrasound that was conducted during prenatal visits, but sometimes they don't. But the child will be born the baby and it'll have severe cyanosis that will, um, maybe it's a little bit mild, but it'll actually start getting worse and worse because the reason is, is those structures that are naturally in the heart, remember in utero, that they needed to push the blood over to the left side of the heart, they're naturally starting to close off. So that ductus arteriosus and that foramen ovale. So the, once you close those off, you're gonna have really no communication at all between that right and left side, and they're gonna have more cyanosis. So keep that in mind. Okay. How will cyanosis present? Why are we having cyanosis? Well, first of all, cyanosis is where it's a bluish tint color to the skin, and it's because of low O2 levels. The body is not getting what it needs, and it's not gonna survive, that child's not gonna survive very long without a medical treatment. So you can see an increased heart rate, increased respiratory rate. That's just the body's way of trying to compensate. That heart's trying to beat faster, because it's like, hey, if I work harder, I can push more oxygen oxygen, but it's not aware that there's no connection between these two, so it's never really going to do that. And the respiratory rate is increasing, so they can breathe in more oxygen to hopefully increase that
that gas exchange, but again, that can't occur because the left side's doing its own thing and it's not gonna get oxygen to the body. In addition, the baby can have poor feeding because of the low oxygen, they're not gonna want to feed. Eventually can lead into heart failure, they'll have cool extremities, decreased growth rate, but a lot of times this is already detected before they start entering into the low growth rate, things like that. Okay. W for watch, this is where the nurses roll. What you're gonna be doing is you wanna watch that heart rate, watch that rhythm. Looking at the oxygen saturation levels, you're going to be giving oxygen and preparing them for intervention because like I pointed out at the beginning of this lecture, this is a critical congenital heart defect and the baby needs treatment fast, which takes us to the last part of, of our mnemonic. And it's A. This is a medication, it's called alprostadil, and another form of that medication, another word for it, is prostaglandin E. That is that medication that started as an infusion and it will keep that connection between that pulmonary artery and that aorta. So it'll keep the ductus arteriosus open and allow blood that is nice and oxygenated to cross over into the aorta and go through the body. So that can buy us some time until surgery can be performed. So they're started on that. Now P, this is for procedures to correct. And this includes a balloon atrial septostomy. And what this is, is it is a heart cath. They do it through a heart cath, so they go through a vessel and they will actually take a catheter, insert it, within this atrial septum, usually front into the foramen ovale. And they will take a balloon, blow up the balloon and pull it out and that will enlarge that foramen ovale because we want that. Why do we want that? Because we want that blood to be mixing to come over here from the left atrium over here into the right atrium and it'll be nice and oxygenated and go up through the aorta. So again, that will buy us some time. It's temporary. They can also insert that balloon into if um, an ASD was already present in within that atrial septum, they can do that, enlarge that. Now after that is performed, they'll be on alprostadil, have the balloon procedure to allow that mixing of blood. Again, it's buying us time. Now another procedure they can do that is permanent, that will actually treat this condition, is called an arterial switch procedure. And what it's going to do is, just like the name says, is it's going to take the pulmonary artery, put it back over here on the right side, take the aorta and put it back over here on the left side, along with the coronary arteries that come off each of those arteries. And what that will do, it'll help correct this condition. Now this is usually performed within the first few weeks of life, once that baby's stable, they just went through traumatic birth and all these other things, so they let them recover just a little bit, get the stress off of them, and then perform that procedure. Okay, so that wraps up this review over transposition of the great arteries. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take the free quiz and to subscribe to our channel for more videos.